In this video, I would like to show you how to customize the Zygmunt bundle. And I'm not going to go through all the Zygmunt modules and layouts. That would just take too much time and will be boring to watch. Instead, I'm going to give you some general principles that you can use to customize literally any Zygmunt layout. And here's what I mean. First, I'm going to show you how to use module settings to customize the look of a module. Then I'm going to show you what is master CSS file and how to use it. And then I'm going to show you how to use your browser's developer tools. In the end, I'm going to cover some potential issues you might encounter while building your website. So without any further ado, let's get started. What I have here is the Zygmunt's Bundle theme page layout and I'm going to use this as an example to demonstrate you the module settings. And for that I'm going to enable Visual Builder and Visual Builder is a Divi theme uh, feature that allows you to customize the page without ever leaving the page. All you have to do is to hover over an element and then uh, change the appearance of that particular modular section. To illustrate that for you, uh, let's for example change this image here. And as you can see, as soon as I hover this image, I'm offered with some options here and I want to click this gear icon, that's the module settings. To change the image, I can simply click the gear icon once again and choose any of these images. Let's for example choose this one and I'm going to click upload and there we go. It is immediately uh, changed on the page so as I said you can change uh, the appearance of the modules without actually leaving the page. You, your changes are immediately uh, visible and you can just then click the save and you can save the page and that's it. Now let me go through all the module settings. Uh, let's keep this image module. Uh, of course, settings for each module are slightly different, but uh, in general, they are pretty much the same. So let's once again open this image module settings, and let's let me give you a quick overview of all the options here. You have three tabs here: content, design, and advanced. And in content tab, of course as the name says, you can add the content. This is the image module, so we can add an image. If it was the text module, you will be able to change the text. And you can link this image, you can add a background, and you can add an admin label. This is a module name that only administrators can see. Then design tab, this is pretty much the tab you will be using the most to customize any of the modules. You can use the search options to uh, find the option that you need. For example, if you would like to add, I don't know, margins, you can type in the margin and uh, it will be offered immediately with a custom margin option. Or you can toggle each one of these options and change uh, anything you like here. So it's pretty much straightforward. I don't need to explain anything. Uh, here are the alignment options, you have sizing, spacing options, you can assign a border, add a box shadow. There are some filter options to change the image as you can see and you can animate uh, this complete uh, section or module as you can see. And then there's the advanced tab and here you can assign a unique ID to this very module. Uh, that's useful if you would like to apply some custom CSS since you want to target this module by that unique uh, ID. Also you can assign a class, it works uh, similar to ID. You can uh, add your custom CSS directly here. And then there are some additional options here that you can play with. And that's, as I said, the options for this image module. Uh, of course, for example, if you go to text module, it won't have some options like image attribute or something that's related to images only, but uh, just to show you, if you go to this module settings, again, you have the content, design and advanced tab. And uh, you have some other options here and I encourage you to uh, check these options and to play with it 
to learn how it all works. Pretty much all the uh, design uh, can be changed using the settings. And now if you can't find something in the settings, let me show you how to use master CSS file. Now I have loaded a header module from the Zygmunt bundle to show you how master CSS file works. To open master CSS file, you want to go to settings and then Zygmunt assistant. Within the get started tab, you'll see the, this button to open master CSS. Master CSS file is the file that contains some additional CSS that uses to achieve some design that we couldn't achieve using the settings only so we had to write some additional CSS here and you can find it uh, all in this file first thing you can notice in this file is that everything is well commented so you can see these comments with the sections and modules name when you click the button uh, this CSS will open in a new window so you want to copy everything and paste it in your text editor. I use Notepad++ as my text editor and I recommend it. But you can use any text editing software. Now uh, we have here a header that is called say hello header so I can search for the comment that says say hello say hello and when I click find here's the comment that says say hello header and so I know that all the, the CSS under this comment is related to this uh, very module we use now in this example let me now show you how to use this code for example these two blocks of CSS control the background color uh, of the blurbs on a hover so if you read carefully what it says even if you're not an expert for the CSS you can tell what it serves for and here I can see it's the Sigmund say hello header and it targets only the blurbs and on the hover if we go here we have these two blurbs and you can see on the hover uh, it inverts the color basically but let's for example add some completely different colors let's for example add green and blue and now that we have changed this, what we want to do is to paste this CSS on our page. And you want to copy only these two blocks of CSS where you made your changes. You don't need to copy this whole document. And one important thing to mention is that you shouldn't edit the core plugin files because with each plugin update you are going to lose your changes. What you want to do now is to copy these two blocks of CSS then go to the page I'm going to click edit page you can use visual builder again but you can also use the backend builder that's fine really then click the page settings and paste your CSS the changed the updated CSS inside this custom CSS box now click save and update the page so uh, what this should do is to it should it is supposed to change the hover color of these two blurbs now let's see and there we go it's the blue and the green on hover now and that's how the master CSS works so you can copy any of these CSS blocks here update it paste it on your page and that's it of course you can add your uh, own CSS that's fine too for example if you uh, copy these two uh, blocks you can remove the hover and this is supposed to change the color uh, on the default state of these two blurbs let's for example use the red for both now we can just copy this and paste it back on our page we are going to paste this well let's for example just above the previous CSS we added now let's update the page and this is supposed to change the initial default color of these blurbs to red and there we go that's it that's how you use master CSS file what if you simply can't find where to change something 
here is a really great tool you can use. Uh, while you're on the page, press F12 on your keyboard and something like this will uh, pop up. It is pretty much the same as on any major browser, it should be the F12 on your keyboard to open the tool and perhaps it won't open like this, most probably um, it is going to be locked on the bottom of the page perhaps or something. I'm just going to have it like this so you can see what we are actually uh, doing here. Don't let all these options to confuse you, we are only going to use this one and that's this icon here called Inspect Elements Tool. As I said, uh, I use Mozilla Firefox, but on Chrome or any other major browser, it's similar. Uh, when you select or enable this option, you can hover over an element and similarly to Visual Builder, you can hover on the elements and click on them and some additional information that will be helpful to us will appear. For example, if we click this blurb that we uh, changed the background color of previously, if we click that uh, here, uh, we have CSS information about this element we just clicked. And we can see that uh, this, what we just clicked, is located in headers zigmund.css. So that's the uh, name of the file. And it's on the line 431. So this very CSS is written inside this document on this line. So it helps us uh, and once again to mention do not edit uh, these files, do not edit plugin files because when plugin is updated your changes will be lost. What you have to do instead is to copy this CSS, update it as per your needs and paste it on, your, on the page or in your theme options and save it there. But let me give you another example. Uh, let's for example click this welcome text here. Uh, when we do that, what we see here is some CSS again. Of course, uh, we can see the color, that's this yellow one. We can see what's the font family, font size and everything else. However, it doesn't say the file name. Instead, it says inline. And what this tells us is that this CSS isn't written in any external file. Instead, you can find all these uh, settings in the module options itself. So, if you would like to update how this welcome text looks like, you would go to module settings. No need to copy and paste any CSS. So that's it, that's how quickly you can determine how to change something, whether it's in some external CSS file and on what line exactly, or if it's not in an external CSS, that it's uh, in the module options. For the end of this video, I would like to mention caching quickly. Sometimes it happens that when you copy and paste the CSS around, or you change some settings on the page, nothing is getting updated actually and you see no changes on the page. Uh, one reason for that could be the caching that is enabled on your website. To disable that, go to Divi theme options and make sure that these two options are disabled, minify and combine JavaScript files and minify and combine CSS files. Also go to Builder Advanced and make sure to disable static CSS file generation. If you use some plugins for caching, uh, temporary disable that until you have done building your website. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you like it and I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching.